Do you think, in all honesty, that it was super competitive at any point? What was the most danger Poetan was in? Yeah, that, that's a great point. And there was some kind of a position where he was hit as he was kind of like turning and, and, and it almost set him and, and, and a knee went down and he popped right back up. And, and I only say that because I think that was the moment. And even with that said, I'm not certain he didn't slip. I'm not certain that he didn't slip the way that he went down. One thing about from the beginning of this sport, and I'm literally going back to Hoist Gracie in 1993, but it was true then and it's been true until Saturday. If you are on your feet and it is not going your way, you take it to the ground. If you fail and you can't get it to the ground, but you try. If you're on the ground and you're constant threat, you try to keep that fight on your feet. Poton is the first that I have seen where it wasn't going his way. And in his next round, he returned to the same realm, walked him down, stood in the same spot, held his hands the same so that he could be attacked the same. It didn't go well. And in round three, he returned to the same spot. He never even thought about stopping believing himself, getting away from his best skill sets, turning to something else. It never even crossed his mind. And things got a little bit better in three, and then you saw that tide turn, which I think largely had to do with conditioning. And conditioning can be affected, not just with the altitude or the way you prepare. You've ultimately got your DNA in there. But one thing that will make a guy fall apart, that will cause him from mentally falling apart and then cause his body to exhaust, is when you hit something as hard as you can hit, and it doesn't go down. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even take a step backwards. When you do that, the things that can go through your mind, Connor uh, had lost his first fight with Nate Diaz. And the big problem in that fight up at 170 pounds is Connor landed the same shot that had put everybody else down. But on somebody as big as a 170 pounder for the first time, Nate could take the shot. And that is really what made Connor fall apart. Hey, if I'm hitting you with my absolute best stuff, I know. Later tonight, as I fatigue, it won't be as hard as it is now. And you're taking it now. And it just can really make you unravel. And I think Roundtree really did a number of things very well. But one thing that broke him, that started to work against him, that Pierre capitalized on, was Pierre constantly showing him, no matter what you do, you're not going to hurt me and I'm not going to go away. It's so funny that you say that because that's the one reoccurring nightmare I have. Swear to God, I, I'm hitting somebody. And they're doing nothing. Like that is a real nightmare that I've had repeatedly. It's just a weird feeling, especially when you're someone like Khalil Roundtree with that missile for a left hand. What I saw, and again, not a fighter, not even a fight analyst expert in any way, but it felt like Poetan was so well prepared for Roundtree that he was going with the punch. Like he, that lean back, which they tell you really not to do, right? You're supposed sure. to move left, right, and, and you know, that to avoid. But he kind of just leaned back, and I never really saw him get hit square, at least with that left. I didn't catch it if, if it happened. I never had a moment of, yes, there it is. That's Khalil's sure. thing. Um, and, yeah, I think it started to mess with Khalil, and then the conditioning, right, which we spoke about, and it just was a really bad night for him after that. He looked, whew, he was a mess. Mark Goddard had uh, told Dana White, if you, if you saw it, that was very powerful. But Mark Goddard said, I have been doing this for 20 years. And I have never, you know, he's, he's in there, he's the referee. I have never heard my ear, the, the, the sensation within my ears of the sound that it makes when Alex hits somebody. At heavyweight, any way you want to do it, I've never heard impact. And I got to tell you, Sos, I mean, things started to go more Alex's way than they went extremely his way. But when you then saw the face of Cleo Roundtree, that was really where I could kind of tie Goddard's statement in with an actual visual of, yeah, he didn't get hit that many times. Daniel Cormier had supplied a photograph. Khalil had done a movie. And in the movie, he was, he, I don't know what happened, but he was hurt. It could have been a car accident for all I know, a beating, but they, they used... Uh, all the effects of Hollywood makeup to, to make him look very, very beaten. They compared the Hollywood makeup to the actual beating, and they were not even close. And I think that just speaks to the damage that, that Piera can do, man. It's, it's something special. I think Mark Goddard used the word, I don't want to misquote him, but I think he said it's ungodly. Yes. 
He said it's ungodly. What a word Correct. to choose, right? This is a one of the best refs in the business, if not the best maybe right now. He's really a great, smart guy. He sees he's, he's pro fighter. We talked about him crying after the fight um, where Kelvin Gastelum fought Israel, and he had never seen anybody put that much of themselves out there and be that deep, you know, in such deep water. So he's a very sensitive ref. He's very sensitive to the fighters. And for him to use a word like ungodly, it must be something to be standing that close. 